Hi, I am Manuela Drogué and I do classical taekwondo. Welcome to episode number seven of the nine videos that comprise the Korean Kicking Project. This is the result of decades of dedication to training and study. You will find precise technical and cultural information that hopefully will benefit you in your martial arts practice. You can check our website www.taekwon.com.ar for more information on this. And if you liked it, please put the thumbs up button, comment, subscribe and share. I will be checking for your feedback. In this video, I share my ideas on the relationship between martial arts training and health, particularly focusing on aging. Specifically, I will be addressing three matters. First, some technical kicking mistakes that usually lead to injury. Second, the different types of physical training and their benefits on health. And finally, my personal experience on stretching. I am just a dedicated martial arts instructor. So when it comes to physical fitness, if you're interested in that area, I encourage you to search for fitness programs offered by experts. And I insist that you should always consult for medical advice before engaging into a physical training program. The contents of this episode number seven are kicking well and joint preservation, the general benefits of exercise, the different types of training and their benefits, what is covered and what is missing in martial arts training, the importance of flexibility for martial artists, warm-up and stretching motions that I recommend, and finally the conclusions. Martial arts are about protection against attacks. In Korean, we refer to self-defense as ho sin sul, but its literal meaning is body protection techniques. This should make us understand that martial arts are essentially methods to protect our bodies and what they contain. Illness and bad aging are real attackers whom most of us are very likely to face much more probably than facing a mugger. Sedentary life leads to the loss of physical qualities we had when we were young and we all want to preserve. We all know that so to say the fountain of youth has a lot to do with physical activity and nutrition. If we want to use martial arts training to defend ourselves against disease, the first rule is that training itself should not be harmful to us. But sadly, sometimes martial arts training indeed becomes harmful. There are two usual mechanical mistakes when kicking that cause chronic injuries. Let's remember that kicking should always be trained in a non-impact manner, which means that our joints are not supposed to receive any type of shock. The first sort of injury occurs on the kicking legs knee because of insufficient pivoting of the base foot. Probably coming from a poorly understood training environment and then increased with a militaristic approach to training, for decades it became usual in Korean karate circles that people were taught to audibly snap their uniforms when kicking. This means that they were actually snapping their joints when kicking full power to the air which repetition unavoidably damages the body. That rigid approach is simply incorrect. You are not supposed to lock your joints unless you're looking for potential knee surgery. All joints in a kick are supposed to engage sequentially into motion, which means the core turning and pivoting, then the hips join the motion while the trunk keeps moving, the knee follows and then comes impact except for very specific exceptions such as the axe kick, in principle none of the joints extending 
in the kick should achieve full extension and all keep moving until impact is made into the target. In round kicking, this means that you should first significantly rotate your base foot as, and as you do it, project your knee horizontally and deep, which will open the hip joint. As a result, the kicking leg will pass the center line at the moment of impact as seen in the picture. Look at the yellow lines that represent alignment and the circles over the joints. If you fail to pivot the base foot and turn your body driving your hip forward to reach the target, you will be forced to extend your kicking leg as seen in the left picture and your knee will be overextended actually and sustain a shock. In that case, the hip fails to extend and so the knee is forced to extend more than what is advisable. When one joint doesn't do its job completely, the following joint usually will take on an excessive workload and compensate. This is not just an aesthetics thing or something about style. The correct pivot, knee projection and form will preserve your joint since impact is aimed at about one to three inches deeper than the surface of the target. This means that when you contact the target, neither the knees nor the hips will have reached their total extension potential. The power of a kick should always be discharged into a physical target that will provide a reaction and cushion the impact. If you are kicking to the air, you should focus on the overall flow and alignment and not popping up your joints. The second type of injury is also caused by insufficiently pivoting the base foot and leaning backward. That will affect not the knee of the kicking leg, but the knee of the base leg. This mistake is frequently seen both in ITF and WTF competition sparring training. When semi-direct oblique round kicks with the instep are thrown to the stomach, focusing on power and speed, without taking enough time to pivot. Let's take now a more general approach. In the martial arts, we speak about the Do, the journey. Life itself is a journey with different stages. By the time we pass, let's say, age 40, we feel a sensation that our physical capabilities are diminishing. Dedicated martial artists may find this as sad news or problematic, but aging is a challenge and we need to adapt. Adapt our mind and adapt our training. One of the central teachings of the martial arts is that we should aim to perform natural, efficient motions and learn to obtain maximum result with the least effort. This is very important to keep our combat ability as we age. And natural means healthy for our body and mind. In other words, in theory, martial art training seems to be perfect for aging adults, but only if we comply with the premise of adaptation. We need to adapt ourselves and our training to the situation. Since life is at the same time a combat we fight and suffer, and a very serious game that we play and enjoy, we aging martial artists must plan how to play the second part of this game. Health is related to homeostasis, a biological property that allows compensating external changes and stabilize cell or organic functioning. So the ability of the body to compensate external factors is the basis of health. We know that lack of habitual physical activity is associated with hypertension, osteoporosis, arthritis, obesity, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, stroke, or lower back pain. This shows that physical activity may elicit positive responses, building strength and health. For exercise to work, it must be challenging our capacities. Exercise serves as a stressor but one that we control. Vigor and health result from good responses to stress, 
known as eustress. And disease comes from distress, which is improperly responding to stressors. For our martial arts improvement and our health, we need our training and physical exercises to periodically challenge the so-called comfort zone. The comfort zone is a place where, if we stay a little bit too much, we start retiring from life. As people who are into physical training, aiming for new standards or proposing ourselves to learn something new is literally vital. We are not really following the path of the martial arts if we settle and rest, because it is a kind of slippery uphill path in which if we don't keep a pace, we will slide down. The process of muscular development seems to be a good example in the sense that growth necessarily involves breaking the limits of our current capacity. For a muscle to grow through weightlifting, mechanical damage and metabolic fatigue must occur. The damage of the muscle fibers stimulates a repair response that results in increase of muscular size. Metabolic fatigue occurs when ATP fuel is depleted or at least subject to significant stress. Getting as close as possible to the limits of our current physical capacities is necessary for improvement, but excessive efforts will lead to injury or discouragement. We must be able to make a distinction between discomfort and pain. Exercise is a stressor and thus should push ourselves beyond our capacities to yield results. Otherwise, there will be no progress. The neurological benefits of exercise include greater blood flow and more oxygen being pumped, stimulating brain cells, the release of hormones that provides a good environment for cells to grow, improved plasticity which favors neural connections, and an increase of cells growth in the hippocampus, which is the area associated with memory and learning, which usually shrinks with age. Exercise has also been found to be an antidepressant, as well as to improve concentration and the capacity to cope with stress. A study at the University of Illinois on groups of adults above 60 that were put to different kinds of physical exercise evidenced that aerobic training consistently resulted in gains of brain mass. The psychological benefits of exercise include the reduction of anxiety, depression and negative mood, as well as improving self-esteem and self-confidence. Besides being a positive stimulator of brain function, physical training helps to sleep well. Anxiety reduction occurs because exercise lowers the levels of the body's stress hormones, such as adrenaline and cortisol. It also stimulates the production of endorphins, which are the body's natural painkillers and mood elevators. Endorphins are responsible for our feelings of relaxation and optimism that may accompany many hard workouts. Now, let's focus on the physical benefits of each type of exercise. In theory, there are seven areas that exercise needs to cover. Aerobic, anaerobic, strength, coordination, balance, breathing and flexibility. Aerobic training is a type of exercise in which its intensity causes the burning of oxygen and glucose by the muscles in significant quantities. The heart is required to pump blood at a rate that keeps a continuous supply and the removal of carbon dioxide as long as it is needed. Endurance sports and long distance running in particular represent this category. Aerobic exercise increases the volume of air that is ventilated per respiratory cycle, so fewer cycles are necessary to mobilize a given amount. The fewer the cycles, the lower the stress on the heart and the lower the blood pressure. Compared to anaerobic activity, 
it is relatively mild in intensity, but in order to qualify as aerobic, it is estimated that you must reach at least 70% of your maximum heart rate, which is 220 minus your age. A practical rule is that aerobic exercise does not allow you to carry a conversation when doing it, so gentle walking or riding a bike at ease don't bring the benefits of aerobics, although of course they are positive for your health. Aerobic training strengthens the heart, improves vascularization, lowers blood pressure, improves breathing capacity, helps to prevent diabetes, to manage body weight, and boosts the immune system. Slow twitch muscular fibers, also called red fibers, are fatigue resistant and especially involved in aerobic activity. Numerous studies have shown that endurance sports enhance longevity. Anaerobic exercise is a high intensity type of workout in which for a short period the body demands more energy than what the aerobic system may produce. Typically aerobic turns to anaerobic when you reach about 85% of your maximum heart rate. Thus, the powerful but short-lasting glucose energy sources into the muscles are used instead of oxygen. Anaerobic exercise increases muscle strength, boosts metabolism, and increases the lactate or lactic acid threshold. Fast twitch, white muscle fibers make a bigger and more powerful explosive muscles, which work well for this type of demand. Now a comment on strength. After age 30, muscular mass is lost at a rate of 3 to 5% per decade. Therefore, strength exercises are a priority from a health preservation perspective. All muscles have both type of fibers. The red versus white muscular fiber distribution depends on the functions of those muscles. They also depend on age and training. Kicking, striking, jumping and agility motions in general are related to white fast twitch muscle fibers. Non-athletic individuals tend to have a 50-50 composition. Endurance athletes tend to have a 70% slow twitch fibers while power athletes get close to 70% of white fast twitch explosive fibers. The decline of muscle mass with age affects these white fibers in particular with some level of increase of the slow twitch fibers which are metabolically more efficient. Strength training does not only preserve fast fibers but also helps for bone density. For that reason, martial arts, when trained with proper intent, including explosiveness drills and strength exercises, are particularly suitable to preserve a muscular balance that is appropriate for the techniques found in Taekwondo, Tang Soo Do, or Karate. Note, however, that an excessive use of anaerobic or extreme strength training, such as conditioning the body to sustain strikes or banging limbs against hard objects, have been found to produce oxidative stress. That is a matter to consider particularly. A study by Armstrong and McLinton, which is available in Amazon and that I recommend, found that Considering 118 lifelong, very highly skilled and ranked karateka, in average, their lifespan was 13 years shorter than the average life expectancy of the population at the time they died. Although it is very difficult to find one particular cause for that unexpected fact, certain unhealthy customs among dedicated martial artists such as sustaining frequent injuries when training or competing, as well as unhealthy, stressful striking of hard objects for conditioning purposes, might help to explain such finding. Anaerobic and strength exercises have not been scientifically found 
to enhance longevity as aerobics do, although there is substantial evidence that non-aerobic training in general when conducted in moderate, non-inflammatory manner has a significant impact in preserving the quality of life when aging. Coordination training improves the ability to use different parts of the body with proper balance, self-awareness, sequencing and visualization. Coordination activity is the same as physical self-control and is focused at the cerebellum. Coordination allows to adapt immediately to external stimuli and provide efficient responses. Coordination exercises are important tools to prevent neurodegenerative disease. This type of education of awareness through slow flowing movement was a tool proposed by Moshe Fendelkreis to restore neural connections and recover natural efficient movement. These ideas have a strong resemblance and reflect the concepts on which Tai Chi Chuan is built. Balance training in particular improves the ability to control and stabilize the body position, the ability to recognize the situation of the body in space called proprioception declines with age and along with a decrease of bone density and muscular strength leads to falls in older adults. For that reason, balancing on one leg, adopting postures with varying physical dispositions and moving in different directions is a much recommended exercise. And as we know, kicking has a lot to do with balance and slow motion kicking is the perfect exercise for this. Breathing exercises are included in so many different training formats with diverse approaches and nature. Diaphragmatic breathing, typically found in martial arts, involves making the diaphragm move down when inhaling. The belly is pushed down and out and makes room to use all of the lungs capacity. Soft breathing exercises lower the heart rate, help to improve the blood flow and increase oxygen absorption. Toxins are removed and there's a general improvement of the immune system. These breathing exercises benefit posture, provide vitality and detoxification leads to a reduction of inflammation and acidity in the body. It also stimulates the lymphatic system, helps to relax unnecessary muscular tension and assists in proper management of stress. On the other hand, we also have hard breathing compression practices. Such dynamic tension routines are found in some southern Chinese Kung Fu styles and in Karate Sanqing Kata, and they have raised concerns in connection with health. According to Armstrong and McLinton, it is possible that such forceful practices reduce the longevity by placing excessive load on the heart and a disproportionate increase in the thoracic pressure. Stretching is a type of training for improving flexibility of muscles, tendons and fascia, as well as to preserve the range of motion of joints and overall mobility which usually decreases with age. Stretching balances posture, improves blood circulation, has a beneficial effect on anxiety, improves response to stressors and helps to preserve muscular tone. Stretching allows to release tensions caught and sometimes even sealed in the body in a matter similar to a self-administered massage. Stretching is normally paired with breathing techniques and many times training strength. Yoga is one of the most perfectly conceived forms of restorative exercise for self-awareness, proprioception, flexibility and strength. Now, 
let's make an honest assessment of what martial arts training usually covers and what it does not. If you are a martial artist above age 45, interested in both health and combative proficiency, let's check what you should be covering. Anaerobic training for short bursts usually makes up the core of our training sessions, either when performing combinations, striking targets or sparring. If we want our techniques to be fast, it is important to keep up our training in a very explosive way to preserve our white fibers, as well as to boost metabolism. Kicking and jumping are inherently intense and anaerobic, as is most training in Taekwondo. To obtain the benefits of body weight control, lower blood pressure, increased vascularization, augmented breathing capacity, preservation of brain mass and memory, as well as strengthening the immune system, you will need to either engage into a separate regular aerobic activity or modify your martial arts training. Personally, I don't recommend completely modifying your training into an aerobic mode permanently, because by adopting a fast pace you will be unable to savor the detailed technical work that makes up advanced martial arts. However, as you will see in episode number 9, our bouncing drills or rhythmic drills are essentially aerobic and they are an outstanding training tool to streamline your motions when they are part of a well-conceived program. When it comes to strength training in the martial arts, it includes all types of resistance exercises, not only push-ups or sit-ups, but also ankle and wrist weights and striking resisting objects. This preserves muscular mass, bone density and postural correction. Strength exercises are particularly useful to improve natural motion, breathing and agility. Weight training may also help if properly conducted, but it should not affect flexibility. Strength in Taekwondo results from properly developed muscles and tendons disposed in correct kinetic chains. So holistic training and strengthening exercises such as functional training or kettlebell workouts are especially recommended. In connection with target striking, it is very important that the targets are not rigid that they yield to some extent. Otherwise, the body will fully absorb the shock of the strike in an unhealthy manner. In general, martial arts techniques organized in forms have a very high standard of coordination, which is very important when facing a physical attack as well as for fighting neurological deterioration. Repetition of basic blocks and strikes at proper rhythm and at increasing levels of complexity will be very helpful for your coordination. On the other hand, in connection with the repetition of basics, if you stick to just combine very few moves and you put too much intent on that, you might be tempted to apply excessive force to attain power. Remember that you are striking to the air without anything to cushion your moves. If too much stress is put on the joints, it may constitute an unhealthy inflammatory stressor to your joints. Proper coordination grants us precious time when fighting. It is recommended that martial artists look for higher technical challenges to improve their combative abilities and to continue to attain more efficient and natural motions in their technique. As we have seen, kicks and in general doing techniques in slow motion is a unique form of balance training with a beneficial effect on proprioception. That in the long run will probably help to prevent falls when you get to an advanced age. Breathing exercises are usually embedded in martial arts forms and other martial practices. They contribute to awareness of our physical and psychological disposition or inner world, 
and thus they optimize our ability to be calm and respond adequately to any external threat. And stretching is a major part of Korean martial arts training and considering its intimate relationship with kicking, it is what I will address next. Stretching is a central part of Korean martial arts and it is closely related to kicking skill. Aiming to attain agility and flexibility, Koreans developed very effective stretching routines. Proper kicking to the trunk or head needs that your body is not tied up by stiffness. Your calves, hamstrings and posterior chain must allow you to bend and fold your legs straight towards your torso and your hips and legs need to allow abduction and in general you must be able to bend your torso sideways and backwards to adjust to the kicking motions. If your trunk or back are stiff you will be forced to lean back and you will not be able to keep your head high in a position that allows you to control your high kicks. Stretching is much more than a kicking facilitator. I see it in a holistic Asian perspective, using it as a way to know ourselves and to train for a flexible body and mind. Stretching involves challenging our current rigidities and limitations, physical or mental, and true stretching means entering into a situation that is uncomfortable and breaking our own internal resistance. This leads to maturity and growth and affects our general connection with the world. I once heard a pearl of wisdom that stuck to me. After age 50, you are as young as your legs are strong and as healthy as your spine is flexible. Again, you are as young as your legs are strong and as healthy as your spine is flexible. We all have plenty of leg strength training in Taekwondo, but flexibility training is something that I recommend to do as a special homework to if you want to extend physical capabilities into advanced age. There are essentially four types of stretching and it is frequent to find samples of most of them in martial arts schools. Static stretching consists on holding a position from 10 to 30 seconds and it may be used either at the beginning of a class or when finishing a workout. The position may be achieved by actively flexing the agonist muscles as for example folding your torso forward in hurdle stretches or passively simply by staying in a position without applying any muscular strength. Dynamic stretching consists on repeating movements that gradually increase the range of motion. Torso rotations are a usual example of this. PNF stretching stands for proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation and it consists on consecutive isometric muscular contractions in a certain near maximum position which is followed by stretches usually assisted by a training partner. This is one of the most effective ways to stretch. And finally, ballistic stretching involves shooting type of bouncing movements to create momentum which moves the muscles into the stretch. Leg raises are a typical example. If performed the wrong way, ballistic stretching may lead to muscular injuries because they may activate the anti-stretch reflex. Stretching early during the morning, either passively or in a gentle dynamic way, is very important because with the movement you melt the fuzz that has installed between your fascia layers during the inactivity while sleeping. In our lives, if days pass without us moving our joints through their complete range, the connective tissue stiffens and movement impediments build. Imagine how stiff you may become after years or decades with limited motion. Fortunately, the body is able to adapt 
and partially revert unhealthy situations. Painful tensions in the lower back, neck and hips may be overcome by proper stretching and breathing exercises. During stretching, twisting and arcing the torso causes the internal organs and glands to be mobilized and stimulated receiving pressure from different directions, which helps the digestive and circulatory systems and keeps the spine and back muscles being mobile. One of the particular things I have seen in senior Korean martial arts exponents is that they keep their stretching routines at a very advanced age. You can search Masters Jung Yong Ku of Jung Yong Do and Choi Kwang Jo of Choi Kwang Do, both were former high ranking ITF Taekwondo members who have exceptional kicks because they have put plenty of time into developing special stretching ideas. Although I am not an expert in the field, I want to share my experience, but I encourage you to access specialized information. In particular, go and check the stretching videos of my friend Simon Sher, who is a dedicated and knowledgeable Taekwondo teacher. The health preservation function of stretching is what makes Korean martial artists continue stretching even when for any reason they are no longer active in their martial arts training. Western people have a wrong opposite view because they say why would I care to stretch since I no longer need it for kicking. I spoke with Grandmaster Pak Jong Su last year a couple of months before he passed away at age 80. Although we cannot prevent death we can improve tremendously our quality of life, maybe even close to the time of our transit to the other life, by making stretching a part of our normal routine. The photos of him at age 74 in 2014 show his physical capabilities and that is something that is a central part of the legacy that Koreans have tried to pass to the martial arts world. Now we'll go to the practical section. My body preparation philosophy is that if possible when we start the day we should try to unstiffen by mobilizing the spine and setting the range of motion to function. Just by adopting a squatting position, doing some rotation and bending motions for about 10 minutes will be very beneficial because we will set ourselves on how to spend the rest of the day with our bodies and joints and structure properly positioned. At the beginning of the class I usually use the major parts of the body in different planes and rotations and release and mobilize the muscles and fascia. I pick the drills depending on the type of class how much time we have, the number of students and the type of workout that will follow. Sometimes I may only spend 10 minutes doing basic rotations and then go straight to the technical exercises. Other times I will do a more complete warm-up in which I will make full use of a stretching routine that typically occurs during our Saturday morning class. What you will see now is a good example of the long version of my stretching exercises in which I have plenty of time and thus the opportunity to work a little bit extra on flexibility. Note that I don't make a special distinction between what is technically a warm-up and the exercises that are for flexibility improvement. I just go progressively from the easy to the more difficult with caution to avoid injuries, I try to listen to my own body, I check how my students are doing, the temperature and I insist in moving naturally while breathing out. Martial arts involve an extended process of physical and psychological transformation and rushing things usually ends up badly. 
so you may do things lively but never violently. Stretching has a lot to do with exploring your current limits, trying to become familiar and overcome the uncomfortable sensation of certain positions by visiting them more often than I want. Breathing and understanding the difference between what is uncomfortable, which you should embrace and dissolve in solitude with patience, and what is painful, which you should avoid. Some of these exercises may be a little bit beyond your current possibilities, but I insist you and invite you to give them a try. We start by squatting. Please note that I'm gently moving one way and the other, and I am keeping my heels on the ground. Then come the trunk rotations while whirling the arms. Keep a relaxed intent and look back as far as possible. Arm circles and chest opening and closing. Look how I'm moving the shoulders in a circle and the hands move way back. And here I'm crossing note, as you will see from the side, that my hands touch each other when they are at the back. Now we do the neck rotations using as much wide circle as I can. Here come the shoulder rotations again. I try to move as forward and backward as possible. Lower the shoulders when you're doing this. Now follows a complex exercise in which I make a hollow of my abdomen and then I turn the hollow part to the back and keep changing, doing a C-shape forward and backward while opening and closing my front and back. I call this the Man of Atlantis for those who are old enough to remember the way Patrick Duffy used to swing in the 1970s TV series. Make sure that your hip goes forward and backward. You should think as if holding your chest up and then down and the same with the back of your neck. Note how I am moving the pelvis, emphasizing one position and the other position. Now we go to the rotation of the hip in wide circles. Then come the lateral stretches. Note that we are always doing the exercises with both sides. Then come the knee rotations to the inside in full circle and then to the outside. Mm -hmm. 
These are the triple knee outward circles. They serve to open the hip and also train balance in a way similar as a crescent kick. Here you are folding your trunk over the extended front leg. Try to use some type of rhythmic motion that will assist you reaching as close to your leg as possible. I'm going on the one side and the other side of the leg. Now I do this exercise which is particularly good. Front, middle, back, up, one, two. Again, front, middle, back, up, one, and full arc. Okay, the full arc is very important. Exhale when you're doing it. This also helps you with your balance. One, two, back, up. One, exhale. One, two, back, up. Bend, full arch. Use rhythm to assist your motions. Again, this is a different way to arch your body backwards. I am imagining I'm holding something heavy that I want to swing around. Always my hands are below the level of my eyes and I am trying to keep my eyes focused on the hands. Now we go to the forward lunges. I go forward to the one side and the other, full facing, look at the back leg. And now I am pushing in the lunge and rowing back. Push and row back. That's quite difficult. Make sure that each hand is on the inside and the outside of the front leg. Pull and push. Of course, this is also a strength challenge as well as a balance challenge. Pull and push. Now we will go into an advanced version of this for which I will use a pad to rest my knee on. I am extending my hip, look, by putting the knee down. I do the same thing, resting the knee on the ground and changing the disposition of the back foot. And now from that kneeling position, we go back as if we are saluting an authority as in the Lion King's movie. We bow and rotate 
whenever going forward to be assisted by rhythm and to better move our whole body. You make a reverence, always exhale, but do it naturally. You don't need to comply with a certain breathing pattern. Now we put our hand on the floor and with the back hand we grab the front foot, trying to bring the foot near the buttocks and try to turn, try to twist your torso. Again, knee to the floor, frontal hand to the floor and with the other hand try to put your foot near the buttocks while twisting. This is very hard, at least for me, it's really hard to do. Now we go to a low riding stance, a very low stance. We try to get comfortable with that, making sure that our feet are planted on the floor and then we go to one side with our hands kept always in the same place. We go to one side and then to the other. Okay. I call this the sliding dragon. And now I start moving my arms around. This is not easy. And then I try to turn my torso a little bit while doing that. That's a good flexibility and strength exercise. Here I go low, extend the legs grab the ankles and try to put my head on the floor with the legs fully extended. Now rotation trying to look at the sky with each rotation. That's what I call the triangle shape stretching. Look that my torso is held upwards. I, now we go to the butterfly or nappy stretching exercise. Now we will go to a special kind of stretch which is similar if seen from a distance to the butterfly stretch but one of the feet is placed at your back exactly at the center in a kind of symmetric way and then you push yourself off the ground with your arms okay trying to be to go straight up Then come the switching of the legs and rotation. Okay, you should try to keep your body as upright as possible and to rotate on a vertical plane. Look at this from the side. Switch side, rotate. Switch side, rotate. Okay, you need to be relaxed to do this. So the exercise actually forces you to relax, otherwise you will not be able to do it. Of course, for doing that, you will need some level of flexibility in your knees. Now we go to the exercise that I call the little house. I stand on the shoulders and push up so that my torso is perfectly vertical. 
the soles of the feet are placed together forming the shape of a little house that's why I call it the little house or also as if you were praying with your feet now we will go to the plow which is a, a movement seen in yoga okay first I start from the butterfly stretch and here I make sure to hold my waist extend the legs and then I am doing I'm touching with the front and back parts of my toes and I try to relax and keep my breathing natural hold the waist and look I'm taking turns for the for the feet to bounce off the ground now from the plow position which you see I'm bouncing but not forcing then I'm grabbing my feet and changing the angle so that my legs become horizontal now we'll go to the Greek letter Rho shape stretches and I'm switching because I want to be agile and not just to stiffly adopt postures okay so I'm using a round shape to go down and come back okay so it's easier and gentle on my body well, one down and immediately up in one sing single curve as we've seen when kicking now we'll go to the hurdlers stretch and I will use a pad for more comfort of the back foot I'm pushing myself off either with the help of the hands or without it that is a pretty good exercise look at the disposition of the back foot and remember when you are using your hands that one hand goes to the outside and the other to the inside of the front leg this is the same thing done without the help of the hands but take your time and do it with your with the help of your arms and then you may progress to the other version then we do the folding of the hurdlers stretch and a rotation same thing with the other side I do the folding using each side of the front leg and then the rotation now we open the legs this of course is gradual and the exercises before have been preparing for us to be able to do this first just try to go forward with your chest gradually you open more your legs now you go to one side and fold and to the other of course you should be doing many more repetitions of each exercise than what I'm showing now I try to open my legs a little bit more look at this kind of bouncy thing I'm doing to help myself to relax 
and now I do the side to side slaps. I slap the sole of each foot. Then I do the overhead side stretches. I help myself by placing one of the hands in front of me facing up and I grab my toe to maximize this stretching. Now I am using a pad so that my foot slips away and it facilitates or it forces me to go to my maximum possibilities. I am using a t-shirt to do that so you can choose uh, any type of apparel. Now I am turning to the sides to do a frontal split. Look what I'm doing. There I changed the disposition of the back foot. You see? You should always use your arms to control so that you don't injure yourself. Okay? Place one arm at each side. Look, that's one type of stretch. And then when I change the disposition of the back foot, the hip will turn and it will make the stretching adopt a different shape. And that's my final split, complete position. This is an exercise that shows whether I'm relaxed and balanced. Okay, you need to put your gravity center low, otherwise you will be falling backwards. Okay, balance yourself, keep your gravity center low, you should be relaxed and you will be able to do that. And now with the both legs forward parallel, I am folding and I am following certain rhythmic motion. Okay, I prefer not to grab and force myself into stretching because it gives my mind a conflicting message. If you start doing strong pullings, your body will understand that the idea is to pull and to use strength and you actually want to relax because you are stretching. And now we go into the bridge, which is very good for strength and also for the back. I, many times I do push-ups. Now I'm trying to take my feet closer to the hands and then I do this. Please do not try to do this that is positioning your forehead and not using your hands unless you are already a very advanced uh, martial artist when it comes to stretching. So I balance myself with my weight in the forehead then I go back to a bridge. The final farewell motion is the kneeling stretch. I try to go as far as possible to completely stretch my back while keeping my buttocks back, so making the biggest distance I can between my hands 
and my buttocks and then I just relax and put the arms to the side with the hands facing up I relax and turn my neck to one side and the other and then gently and slowly come back into balance to martial artists in general I insist that those above 40 make plans in view of the second half of our lives this means considering on how to improve training both from the combative perspective as well as the health protection perspective my recipe consists on two words natural motion I recommend paying special attention to kicking because it helps aging martial artists to continue being athletic, coordinate and agile, way above the average for their age bracket. I truly believe that someone past age 50 may start from scratch and become a fine martial art technician, although kicking will probably not become the area in which she or he will excel. In the martial arts, young people represent the martial, the warrior, with a strict and predetermined approach to follow and a strong and flexible body. But as we age and cease to be young, the martial gives way to the art. You are no longer a soldier. You should welcome and embrace the artist. It is the time to take more of a free and creative approach. The young, the soldier, has a restricted mindset because of discipline and happens to have an unrestricted and strong body. Armies don't need innovative privates, but they need generals to be able to think out of the box. Your martial art training should be progressively leading you to become a deep and free-thinking martial artist. That martial art upbringing should be feeding you with information and criteria up to the point that you can get good information by yourself. With age, the body starts to feel restrictions, but your mind should become flexible and wiser in your appreciation for life and to value the importance of your training. Now let me make a comment a little bit at higher level than just training. If we look around, we will see that lots of people struggle to survive in the world. In one way or another, we all do. Life is a challenge. If you're practicing martial arts, you have been blessed because you're actually doing something you like. Not everyone has that opportunity. We need to do something with the blessing that we receive. Some are fortunate to teach and pass it to the next generations. Others may use it simply to share compassion and joy to the world around us. Seek to attain not only a strong fist, but most importantly, a warm smile. As Grandmaster Kim Han Chang told me, I invite you to find which is the personal mission that you have as a martial artist. Now, I want to talk to the professional martial artists that are over 45, those that have more than two decades of training. Learning new things will keep you having a healthy student's approach to training and keep the magic alive. Noting that the training of karate-related, taekwondo, tang soo do martial arts use forms as an essential tool of their training so that we focus on ourselves and polishing our own motions, I would recommend that while keeping our current art, you engage into a martial art form that focuses on others. I mean, unbalancing, trapping, locking, and throwing other people. Those skills are typically found in Hapkido or Judo. Such techniques provide an experiential knowledge of rhythm and balance in manipulating an opponent's body. If you happen to find an instructor to teach you in accordance with your possibilities and expectations, you will benefit immensely because those skills represent the other side of the coin and this new practice 
will show you an unexplored part of the self-protection potential that you need to make your current martial art experience blossom. You don't need to become an expert in that new martial art. Just go have fun and be stimulated with your training. Kicking and rolling on the floor will both help you with balance, orientation, mobility and leg strength. So keeping them as a central part of your training will extend your martial art youth. Weapons training, such as using the staff, the sword or sticks, will also help you to refine motions and present new coordination challenges. These weapons provide bigger, extended versions of many of the figures and patterns we draw with our hands in Taekwondo or Tang Soo Do forms and will reveal the fighting potential of some of those movements. Also, such long weapons strengthen the body, demand the use of the waist and back as source of power and are a great challenge for coordination. My next recommendation to that inquisitive approach is that at some point you might probably want to check what are called the internal Chinese martial arts such as Tai Chi Chuan, Xing Yi Chuan or Pagua Zhang which study the root of combative motion from a different perspective in a very deep way. These systems are not for everyone, particularly when you come from a fast type of training as Taekwondo is. They are hard to appreciate from the combative perspective unless you are already a quite educated and deep martial artist. In my personal research, to practice routines, I have found them to be incredibly beneficial in terms of power, flexibility, efficiency and health. I am really learning about martial arts by doing that. These systems teach their techniques in a slower way initially, following the premise that slow brings relaxed and relaxed brings fast. So this type of training sets you closer both to mechanical efficiency and to health, which is very important because as we age, we have less energy to spend. We need to spend it wisely when training and get the most out of it. I hope you liked this video and that it has made you think about these matters. If that is the case, please like, subscribe, comment and share. I will be checking for your feedback. The next episode will be following soon. And remember, as martial artists, we have the obligation to keep up with our training for a strong body, a wise mind and a caring heart. You all stay well.